Alright guys, what is going on? Welcome to the next part in the Raspberry Pi Supercomputer series. Uh, where we left off, we were installing the operating system. After your first installation, you'll get that Raspberry config page. If you haven't figured it out, just hit finish there. Uh, then once you're done there and you're at the line, you shouldn't have to log in. If you did happen to do StartX and you logged off or something, to log back in, the default username is Pi and the password is Raspberry. So, uh, log back in and type in ifconfig, and that will give you your inet address. So you're looking for, it starts with 192.168, okay? So look for that address. Once you have that, if you're on OSX or a Linux operating system that you're going to be like uh, accessing via SSH, uh, then you won't need PuTTY, but if you're on uh, Windows, you will need PuTTY. So head over to www.putty.org, download PuTTY here, and uh, download PuTTY. I've already downloaded PuTTY, so I don't need to do that again. Once you've downloaded PuTTY, uh, go ahead and open it up. And here's where you'll type in uh, your that uh, address that you just got. So mine was 192.168.0.20. Hit enter. And this should come up and it should ask you your login. Well, my login, of course, is Pi. And the password is Raspberry, as everyone's is. So. Now that you've logged in, what next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and make this window a little bit more uh, easy to read for you guys. So one moment. All right, so that should be a little bit easier for you guys to read. Now, before we go ahead and get started, uh, the last thing I want to mention is the way I learned how to make a supercomputer out of my Raspberry Pi was actually from the people at Southampton University. Um, they actually, or University of Southampton is the proper name. So actually, if you go to google.com and you just typed in uh, Raspberry Pi Supercomputer, hit enter, all these images are actually from, uh, you guessed it, University of Southampton, where they actually built this supercomputer. Um, so this was theirs, and their housing was made out of Lego and all of that. So actually, they gave a white paper. Um, regarding how to actually uh, set up this Raspberry Pi and all that. Uh, so some of the information is going to be coming from there since that's exactly where I learned how to do it. So uh, shout out to the people at University of Southampton uh, for sharing all the information as far as how they did it and all of that. Um, and also shout out to all the people they gave a shout out to because actually in their paper it seemed like there was quite the collaboration uh, between a lot of people uh, just to do it. So anyways, um, yes. Don't forget to say thanks to them. So uh, the first thing that's always a good idea to do with your Raspberry Pi, uh, and is also the first thing that they kind of suggest that you do once you have your Pi all set up, is indeed change your password. Because every Pi is Pi at Raspberry. Uh, and the username is Pi, and the password is Raspberry. So that's what we're going to change now. Uh, so to change your password, what you need to type in is passwd. Hit enter, and it's going to ask you your current password, uh, which is going to be Raspberry. And then it's going to ask you your new password. So type in whatever you want your new password to be. And uh, hopefully it's updated for you uh, successfully. So now the next thing that you're going to want to do is you could log out and log back in. I don't really feel like doing it, so I'm not going to. And now the next thing that we want to do is go ahead and do a sudo apt-get update. So go ahead and type in sudo, which means super user do apt-get and update. And now you're going to update this. You're going to see a bunch of stuff spam by, blah, blah, blah. All right, once that is complete, uh, the next thing that we want to do is we want to get Fortran. So we're going to go ahead and grab that too. So sudo apt-get install. G for Tran. And so we'll do that. Oh, and hit continue there. All right, so the next thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to uh, put this in a directory. So we're going to do make dir. I'm going to move my mouse. Make dir, and we want to do home pi and mpich3. If you follow their guide, they use MPI CH2, uh, and 3 is out now, so we're going to use 3. So hit enter, and we've made that directory. Now, just in case some of you guys aren't familiar at all with Bash and all that, if you hit LS, that tells you like what's in the directory that you're in. If you hit PWD, it tells you what directory you're in. And obviously, MKDIR made the directory. 
Um, and now we're going to CD into that directory that we made. So again, if we LS, we see that there's our MPIC3. So now we're going to just do uh, CD MPI3 or CH3, and we're in there. If you want to know more about all of the commands and stuff, I actually have a few tutorials on uh, commands and navigating uh, Bash for those interested. All right, and now we're actually going to go ahead and download uh, this MPICH3. So to do this, uh, you're going to do wget, and now you have to type in the web address that you want to get it from. Now, if you have a way to copy and paste, that is fantastic. Uh, but we're going to actually just go ahead and type it out. If I remember, I'll put the link in the address. And if I don't, or the link in the address, the link in the description. And if I don't remember, someone will remind me, and I'll put it in the description. So uh, the link that we actually want to get from is kind of long, so it's going to run over here. But anyway, it's going to be HTTP colon slash slash www.mpich.org slash static slash downloads slash 3.0.4 slash mpich um, dash 3.0.4 dot tar dot gz so take a moment make sure you got everything there right and then go ahead and hit enter. And now it's going to uh, download this for us, and we are all set. So now what that did, let's go ahead and hit ls again. Now we can actually see that there is this tarball here in our file, or in our uh, folder rather, or actually the proper name is directory. And now what we want to do is unpack it. So we're going to use tar xfz mpich uh, dash, and just the file name basically is. 304.tar.gz hit enter and now it's going to go ahead and unpack that it, it looks like it's not doing anything but it's doing something alright once you're done you'll look like this again let's do ls and now you can see we've actually got the folder so it's like you unzipped a zip file for example so now what we're going to want to do is make another directory and this is where we're going to put the build here so this is our build directory okay so what we're going to do now is mkdir, or actually we probably need to do sudo mkdir, um, and I guess what we're going to do is home rpi mpi, and then again just hit the up key to get the last thing you typed, and then we're actually going to do sudo make directory home rpi mpi. Uh, and then we'll do mpi3 dash install. Hit enter. Good. And now the other thing that we want to do is uh, the build directory now. So make or sudo make dir and again home. And this time it's in home pi mpi ch underscore build hit enter and now we're going to cd into there so change directory so cd and again home pi mpi ch underscore build and now we're in that directory and now comes a bit of a long step but not the longest step so what we're going to want to type in here is oh, let me move my mouse sudo home pi mpi ch3 slash mpi ch dash 3.0.4 and then slash configure space dash prefix equals slash home slash rpi mpi slash mpi3 dash or oops mpi ch3 dash install hit enter and hopefully we start seeing some output and now this is going to take a little bit probably five 
ish, ten minutes maybe. Okay, I'm all done. Uh, if you're not, you'll have to wait. And the next thing that we need to do after we've built the files, we need to make the files. So we want to do sudo make, hit enter. And again, you're going to have to watch stuff whiz by. And if I recall correctly, this is the one that takes the absolute longest to finish. Now, while this is installing, I'm actually going to go ahead and conclude this video. In the next video, we'll start with the rest of the things that we uh, really need to do as far as like installing and waiting for things are concerned after you know the downloading of the uh, operating system moving it and then doing all this stuff um, we're pretty much done with all of the waiting processes so from here on out it's a lot more of um, you know actual doing stuff although we will make a copy of this uh, this SD card eventually but anyways so you guys do have a little bit more uh, interesting things to look forward to rather than just sitting here watching and waiting for this to finish <laughs> so uh, hopefully I have your hopes up. So uh, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and the subscriptions. And it is already done. Nice. And until the next video.